Hello, I'm Dr. John Cruz, and today I'm going to be talking about ultradian rhythms. Um, I'll be, if you have questions while I'm talking, you can type them in and I'll get to them at the end. This will be posted on both Facebook and in a few days on YouTube as well. I'm going to start by just talking about what are ultradian rhythms. So if you don't know, you might think that this is some kind of online stockbroker system for beating the stock market, it's not. So ultradian rhythms are rhythms that have periodicities um, cycle more quickly than a day. So ultra is more than or beyond Diaz's day. Some people get confused and think, therefore, that should be rhythms that are longer than a day, like monthly menstrual periods or seasonal cycles. Those are actually infradian rhythms. And the reason or the weirdness between ultra meaning extreme or a lot and these rhythms to be shorter is because the ultra is referring to the frequency, how many times a cycle repeats during a day. So it's ultradian rhythms repeat many times during a day. Infradian, infradian rhythms um, repeat less than a day. So the loosest definition is these are any rhythms that are shorter than a day. And that could include with the widest definition, you know, your breathing, which is happening 10 to 12 times a minute, or your heart rate, which is happening, depending on your fitness, 45 to 70 times a minute. But, but in actuality, the term is usually reserved for those cycles, biological cycles that are on a 20 minute to a six hour range. So circling in that range. And there's a number of variables in humans and across the animal spectrum that do show periodicity or do show rhythmicity with less than a daily cycle. Um, so that would include your heart rate does vary. Again, separate from the, the heart rate itself, the variability in the heart rate varies. Um, hunger pains, other digestive system, endocrine functions, particularly growth hormone release, cortisol release, show periodicities that are less than the 24 hour cycle nostril dilation many people are familiar with that with yogic and other breathing but that seems to go on a according to some experts you know 30 minute to an hour cycle where it changes which nostril you're breathing out of um there's some recent researchers who say that some of these ultradian phenomena probably shouldn't be called ultradian rhythms so, so i'm going to show it. so this is a uh, picture of temperature rhythms and just showing the wild and wacky things biology researchers do. The top one is alpaca scrotum body temperature rhythm. Um, the bottom one is lion abdomen. The middle one's gemsbok, which is an antelope um, brain temperature rhythms. So superimposed on the big 24 hour cycle in each of these, you can see lots of fluctuations that look like there's Know, maybe a periodicity of an hour, but some many researchers are saying those are not true periodicity. There's not a true rhythmicity to them, so maybe we should be calling again that fluctuation episodic ultradian events. And what I'm going to be talking about today are more phenomena where we do think there really is some true rhythmicity or periodicity, and that there does seem to be a 90 to 120 minute cycle. Um, it's a sloppier clock um, than our circadian clock. And this is a cycle, um, some have labeled it the basic rest activity cycle. Norm Kleitman, one of the first major important sleep researchers, is one who gets credited for discovering it. So there is a prominent rhythmicity during sleep, and there's a prominent rhythmicity during waking hours. Whether those are the same underlying clock systems or whether those are completely different and just coincidentally about 120 minutes, um, two hours is unclear at this point and there's argumentation about it. Um, but I'm going to start first with the um, this ultradian rhythm in sleep itself. So within sleep, um, I have a graphic, I'm not sure if it's easy to take. So this is a pattern of one night's worth of sleep and different stages of sleep with the wakefulness at the very top. Then REM sleep is highlighted here in red, and then different stages of what we call non-REM sleep, going through one, two, three, four, with four being the deepest stage of REM or of non-REM sleep. Um, 
it's the simple explanation, non-REM sleep is also called slow wave sleep. Memory consolidation appears significantly to be occurring during these times. And these periods of REM sleep are briefer periods of time, although they do get longer as the night goes on. And the REM sleep is not so much to do with memory consolidation. So one thing physiologically, your brain looks as active or engaged as a night, uh, as a daytime active brain, whereas the slow wave sleep refers to the slow waves. There's a synchronicity and a um, slowing down of what the brain seems to be doing. That's an oversimplification. Again, so REM sleep, your body is actually physically paralyzed during that time. Your brain is actively engaged, looking close to an alert waking brain. And almost all of our narrative, vivid story, crazy dreaming is happening during this rapid eye movement sleep. Um, gets its name REM, rapid eye movement, because although I just said the body's paralyzed, the eye movement muscles are not paralyzed. So if you watch someone who's falling asleep, given that with the very first cycle, the REM often is a, there's often a REM episode, right, as we're falling asleep, you can see under someone's eyelids, their eyes moving back and forth like crazy, sort of. So the other thing that, that often gets ignored or um, and what, what the gist of my talk today is, is this. We talk about the non-REM sleep and then going up to the REM sleep and cycling like that. And again, the cycles are about every 90 minutes to an hour and 20 minutes. Um, the cycles are not, again, nearly as precise. With the circadian clock, you probably have friends who can wake up at exactly 7.15 every morning when I worked with hamsters in the lab 30 plus years ago, you could set your watch to the minute when the hamsters in complete darkness, so they're getting no clues from lights going on in the building or footsteps or auditory sounds or anything else, to the minute they would start running on their running wheels. Our circadian clocks are tremendously or incredibly precise clocks. This um, 90 minute ultradian rhythm during sleep is a much sloppier clock. So why, why did I title the speech initially, you know, why am I awake at 4 a.m. in the morning? So again, usually we go through slow wave sleep, come back up to REM sleep, and then right after each REM sleep period, there's often a period of just a few minutes where our brains are as absolutely actively awake as they look in, in a person walking around. But if our eyes are closed, if we're um, not startled into it, we pretty quickly drift down through the stages of slow wave sleep into a deep slow wave sleep. And our subjective awareness in the morning is, I've slept through the whole night. I've slept through my seven, eight, nine hours. I've been sound asleep the entire time. Again, the sleep experts or a expert neurologist looking at your EEG, your brain waves at these moments of wakefulness at approximately the end of each 90 to 20 minute episode, it's if they weren't told this is during sleep, they would say, yeah, that's a waking brain right there. Now, on the other hand, if you have live construction near you, if you have traffic and cars are honking, if your room is too hot or too cold, if someone's snoring next to you, if your bladder's overactive or small or you need to get up to pee, urinate, um, then you're often awake in the middle of the night and you're aware that you're awake. Um, and many people then freak out saying, oh my God, it's 2 a.m. I just got up to pee or the dog started barking and here I am wide awake and I shouldn't be awake. So their feeling of I shouldn't be awake adds into daytime arousal. And one of the things I've talked about in the previous sleep episodes, the biggest finding in sleep medicine of the last century, I would argue, is the finding that almost all of insomnia, more than 95% of cases, are not a problem with your sleep system. Insomnia is a problem with your daytime arousal systems not shutting off well. And that's particularly important here because if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're aware and you know, oh, my sleep system's fine. I'm just at one of these intervals, probably right after a REM episode. And, and I should have highlighted a very vivid dream can also contribute to being awake and alert after the REM episode. So 
I'm alert in here, but if I just chill out, if I calm down, I can drift off into another REM episode or another slow wave sleep and then into the REM back up cycling again. We have cycles like that four or five times a night. So this is one of the few cases where just education, just knowing, okay, I'm awake in the middle of the night. That in itself is not pathologic. That in itself is not something to worry about. Now, I'm not saying being awake for two hours in the middle of the night is normal, but just being awake in the middle of the night is almost always, again, unless it's a really violent disruption, which could wake you from any stage of sleep. Most of the time, it's waking you up at that time when probably you are in a state of wakefulness itself. Um, so I've cured many people of their middle insomnia over the years by just telling them about this cycle of ultradian sleep patterns and again reassuring them this is not a sign that your sleep is broken, this is not a sign that your sleep system is not working properly. If you can just relax and accept that this is one of these wakefulness times and you're having four or five of them every night, um, you'll get through it. The other thing I tell people is that, again, many I knew about this ultradian pattern to sleep when I was in my 20s and 30s and doing research on circadian rhythms. Subjectively, it did not make any sense to me because I was a really good sleeper. I slept solidly the night through and I was like, this is crazy. They're telling me four or five times a night I'm almost awake or awake, but with my eyes closed. As an middle-aged to elderly person right now, I can assure you that this pattern is, I'm much more aware of the reality of this pattern and much more aware of those awakenings periodically through the night. So that's all I'll say about the sleep part of the ultradian cycle. Now, there's less research, but a little, and particularly um, a psychologist named Ernest Rossi has written about the basic rest activity cycle. Again, whether this is the same physiologic mechanism as this ultradian sleep cycle or not remains unclear and um, strongly debated. But we know that most people show a pattern of about 90 minutes of alertness during the day, followed by 20 minute episodes where they're measurably less alert, more fatigued, less able to calculate simple math problems, more prone to making mistakes. And awareness of that ultradian um, pattern of alertness of wakefulness, again, called the basic rest activity cycle, is a you know, living hack that some people are promoting as a way to enhance productivity and be aware of. I mean, there, there, there are messages that if you're not giving yourself that rest during those 20 minutes when you're less alert, which does seem to be a time when the body is engaging more in recovery processes than in active engagement processes. If you try to blow through that, if you try to ignore it, you're going to be more tired at the end of the day. You're going to be less productive in each of the subsequent 90 to 120 minute cycles during the day. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with the Pomodoro method, who, where you focus on a task for 25 minutes with an alarm clock that goes off and then you have five minutes of downtime, this is sort of putting three Pomodoros together and strongly suggesting at the end of your third Pomodoro, you take a full 15, 20 minutes off to accommodate this underlying ultradian rhythm and give yourself a break or reset rather than jumping into a fourth Pomodoro and thinking that you should be refreshed and ready because you've taken a five minute break at the end of each 25 minute break. Um, so that's about all I have to say with ultradian rhythms in the nighttime or during the day. Again, the big take home message is being awake in the middle of the night is not necessarily a sign of problems. And if you take it as a sign of problems, that's going to guarantee it's going to keep you awake or up. So I am not seeing any questions here. Next week's topic is going to be the honeymoon period in response to stimulant medication. So many people get the best effects they ever get from their stimulant medications when they first start on them. And we'll be looking at why that is. And that's all for this week. So stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll be back next week.